Hey everybody, welcome to Big E's YouTube channel. This is Big E, or Bishop Speed, whatever you want to call me. Just don't call me late to dinner. Anyway, um, I'm continuing this, uh, um, this series on some people that I've, I've, um, excuse me, I got some cheap ass fucking lighting going on here issues. Um, some people in my life that have impacted me. Uh, yesterday I talked about Jimmy. Unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Um, today, um, I want to bring up um, Jack Madius. Uh, he is alive. He's a class racer, runs stock eliminator NHRA. Um, just wanted to share a cool story about him and how he helped me. Excuse me, by the way. Let's get this out of the way. Cheers, bitches. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, Jack Medius. That's who we're going to talk about. Jack Medius lives in Bellum. He, I believe he's owner of Bethlehem Auto Sales. Um, <clears throat> class racer has been for, God, probably since the 80s. The dude's been doing a long time. He's up there in age, but don't get it wrong. The dude can still cut a light. Uh, he had a bunch of early Pontiacs, Le Mans's. Uh, he had, um, when I met him, he had a 97, I believe it was a Trans Am. It was an LT1 powered car. Um, he had a few Camaros, about the same, uh, fourth gen like mine. They were LT1. Uh, he had... Uh, he sold the one Camaro. He had a 2004 Pontiac GTO with the LS2 um, that he held uh, national record with. He held national record with the 97 Trans Am. Um, he sold everything. I believe a guy in Texas by the name of Bill McAllister. Um, I forget which division Texas is. He bought his 04 GTO. It's still painted up exactly the same way that Jack had it. It's called Chieftain. All his cars were called Chieftain because of the whole Pontiac and the Indian thing was big with them back in the day <clears throat> before everybody got politically asshole correct. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Bill McGill McClister, McAllister, something like that, he has the car. It's orange, can't miss it. 04 GTO. He sold those cars. <sighs> Um, he, I'm not exactly sure the exact details, but I believe there was money you had to put up, um, for the Copo Camaros when they came out. I think it was 2012 was the first year they brought the Copo out, uh, which if you didn't know, is supposedly a drag race ready, uh, Camaro, um, fifth gen, obviously, um. You could still tweak it a little bit, but the, the idea was that you could technically unload the car to dealership, load it onto your trailer, and you could actually go right to the drag strip with it with no questions asked. But anyway, I think I heard a, a, uh, a figure of $30,000. I'm probably wrong. I might have heard wrong. I probably did. But anyway, supposedly there was an amount of money that was pretty substantial that you had to put up just to get your name in the hat to be drawn. So the program, for what I remember, they built 65, um, 65 copos. Okay. So my understanding was you put up an X amount of money to get your name in the hat. That was non-refundable. If your name didn't get picked, sucks to be you, you know. Uh, you know, good job on being first, you know, runner up um so jack sold his cars um and put his name in the hat um uh, i believe it was it, it might have been in february was it something like that it was a friday and he was on facebook saying about well i guess i wasted the money i'm not gonna get the the, the copo la da 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 he was all pissed off which hey i understand i mean if the figure is correct, the $30,000, that's, for a guy like me, that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, that's that's a lot of, that's a lot of dough. Um, so, um, Saturday morning I wake up, and he's got over Facebook, he got number 62 of 65, 
that his is going to have the 427 in it. There was three engine combinations. I think it was the 350 with, with, with uh, uh, I forget what size supercharger. Then there was the 350 with the larger supercharger. And then there was the all-out 427, which was just not, nothing but brute, brute cubic inches. That's what Jack got. I guess his was one of the few red ones, too, that were made that year. But anyway... So he gets this car, he got it, he got it back, and uh, send it out, he got it painted up, and um, I guess they had some issues, um, he worked with Tom Goldman, which I'm going to do a, a video on him as well, um, they had some issues with the car, they had to change something with the, I forget if they changed transmissions or not, I'm not sure, I know they had to do something with the rear gear, and they were having a problem, the car is very inconsistent, because he would go up there, and the car would run, it, it would launch uh, a killer 60 foot, killer. And then it would go up, he'd do everything the same, and the car would just blow the tires off. Like just smoke the tires, not hook up, whatever. I know they had an issue with that, that was one of the issues they had. I forget what exactly they did um, to, to, to rectify the problem, I don't know if they changed the rear gear or not. I, if I told you, I'd be lying. But anyway... So they got the car running. The car goes consistently 930s all day long. Um, so Jack was running the uh, the factory stock class for those, the Cobra Jets and, and the Drag Pack Challengers. So anyway, um, fast forward to 2017, 2018, Jack bought another one, but this one was a drop top. His first one was a hard top. The one he, the second one is a drop, is a drop top with a 427, and that also, from what I understand, is I think in, I don't, I didn't see what it actually ran. I think it's probably about the same, probably running maybe mid to high nines, I would think, with the extra weight with the convertible top. But anyway, so that's the story on Jack. The story I want to share is, I know Eric, come on, you're fucking long, but I know, sorry guys, it's late, I'm tired, I'm trying to just get this. Get a video done for you guys. Enjoy for, for the weekend. Um, I'm going to say it's like 2008, 2007. We're going to backtrack to. I was an apprentice, Carpenters Union out of Philadelphia. We just basically got the car together about a year and a half before from my accident at Island Dragway back in 04 when I wiped the whole bottom end out. So... We basically we had the 12 bolt rear in it from strange we had 456 gears we had the adjustable torque arm in it we had basically the rear suspension dialed in we were running good we were like you know what to get the car more consistent we're going to put a turbo 350 in with eight inch converter had the drive shaft shortened three quarters an inch made up in the amount blah da 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 put the transmission up realized shit i'm out of fucking cash right imagine that hmm racing and you run out of money <laughs> shocker but anyway, ran out of cash. Or I didn't have enough to go out and buy the 8 inch torque converter that would work with my, that would be best for my combination. Anyway, I um, got a cold phone call one day from um, Tom Goldman, who just fabbed the 97 Trans Am, who just converted it over for, the last, leaving that day, they were in D stock automatic in stock eliminator. He calls me up, he says, hey, uh, how's things going with the court with the Camaro? And I said, well, I said, I'm out of cash. I need to torque for it. He goes, Hey, you know, let me talk to somebody. He goes, I might know somebody. So here he calls Jack. Jack just reset the D stock automatic record. I believe two weeks earlier over when English town was still open. So with that being said, uh, he, uh, he I didn't realize it, but he swapped torque converters, and that's when he reset the record. So he has a torque converter that was in the car. He sent it back to Turbo Action. He got it redone, had it, and they send it back to him. So basically now this thing's brand new, rebuilt. Or not brand new, but it's rebuilt like new, sitting in the box in the shelf in his garage. So anyway, <sighs> Tom calls you back two days later. It says, hey, he says, uh, you still need a torque converter. I said, hell yeah. He says, by the way, he goes, call, call Jack. He, he needs some carpet work done because I was, I was uh, apprenticeship school for flooring. So uh, I call up Jack. Jack's like, yeah. He goes, can you, can you 
upholster some steps for me and, and I need my RV because he had a beautiful RV that he used obviously because he was going up and down following the Northeast Division and down to Virginia and shit like that. So I said, yeah, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll come out and take a look at it. And I said, would today work? He goes, oh yeah, sure, you know. So I go out there, go to his house. I do the carpet work for him. I go in his RV. I do the RV carpet work there. And basically, I was there, I think, like six or seven hours, whatever. And uh, he says, um, and he asked me, he says, you wouldn't happen to have a picture of your car on you, do you? And I said, yeah. So I showed him. He goes, man, he goes, I never had a red one, but I do now. Well, at that time, he didn't. I'm sorry. At that time, he didn't. He had the 04 uh, GTO and he had the 97 Trans Am. He just sold the silver Camaro that he had before. Anyway, um, he says, hey, he says, uh, come out to the garage for a minute. His garage was just amazing. He says, hey, he says, Tommy... Tom Goldman. He says, Tommy tells me that you're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place. I said, he's like, did you need a torque converter and you're out of cash? I said, well, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. He says, tell you what. He says, uh, I got this turbo action eight inch converter in here. And he goes, this is the one I had in my black car before I reset the national record. He says, would you be interested? Dude, who wouldn't be? So basically he says, look, he says, take the torque converter. That's payment for the carpet work. He says, and then he goes, did you ever shim a torque converter? I never did. I said, honestly, no. I always just put them in and hope for the best. So he gave me a crash course how to shim a torque converter, which was, I was like, holy crap, that's awesome. So uh, he says, basically, he said, you know what? He goes, these torque converters are anywhere from $900 to $1,200 new. He says, but he says, dude, I'm old. He says, I'm getting up there in age. He goes, we need young guys like you in the class. The only way it's going to happen is if we reach out to you guys, la da 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 So I was kind of blown away by that. Again, my humility. Cheers, bitches. So anyway, so I'm driving home from Bethlehem to my house out here in the great metropolis and mean streets of Town. I have this torque converter in the, in the truck. And, oh, no, 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 I lied. I was living in Kutztown. That's where the cows inbreed. Anyway, um, so I get to my shop there. <clears throat> I have the car up on jack stands and I get everything up. I get a torque motor up, shimmed it. Um, we got it going, filled it up, took it to the track. The thing launched amazing. So, anyway, torque converter works great. It's how many years later? La da 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 da. Things are great. So, anyway, um, that's a story I have on Jack Medius. If you're into class racing, check him out. Um, really, really great, good pieces that he runs. His cars were always tuned to perfection. Good driver. For a guy his age, the dude cuts a freaking mean-ass light, let me tell you. He spanks a lot of the kids with it. So my hat's off to him if he ever sees this video. He probably never will, but if he ever does, hat's off to him. Good dude. So anyway, that's my story today of someone that helped me out and influenced me and just who really didn't have to. You know, I'm basically not, e I'm not even a dot on the radar compared to these dudes, and he helped me out a lot. So shout out to him and uh, wish him the best. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, like and subscribe. Even if you hate me, just fucking subscribe just so I can have an extra subscriber so I can get freaking paid for this shit. But... I got better stuff coming. I got some more stories coming up. I got at least two or three people I want to go, I want to talk about yet for you guys and to help, you know, keep their legacy going. So, again, like and subscribe, comment. If you want to comment about somebody who's inspired you, that would be great. You never know. Maybe even tell me a little bit. And if I can do some research, maybe I'll do a, a, a video on them. So, <clears throat> take care of each other. Watch out for each other. Don't be a selfish asshole. Watch out for each other, and we'll see you next time on Big E's. Take care, buddies.